<laughs> Water is essential. We all need it. Montana's more than one million residents live, work, and play in widely different ways, but we share an absolute dependence on water. Adequate supplies of clean water are the foundation of our communities, farms and ranches, hydroelectric power, outdoor recreation and tourism, and the natural environment that sustains our fish and ultimately all life in Montana. It's curious that we have become so separated from understanding the source of our water and understanding the care for water, um, understanding our sense of responsibility. As our population grows and our climate changes, those working closely with Montana's water resources are cautioning us to prepare for shortages. Every stakeholder group, whether it's the outfitting industry or agricultural municipalities or whatever other recreational users that are out there, we're all realizing that our water resources are a finite resource. I'm getting my water all the way from the Gallatin River. I can't do that by myself. I've got to have a whole community of irrigators running water together to have any hope of getting that water all the way to myself. Three of the 300 citizens from every corner of our state who converged at Montana's first water summit. Something big is happening. Montanans are sitting down with fellow citizens they don't typically interact with, connecting and listening and expanding their thinking about needed solutions. Nothing on this scale concerning our state's water future has occurred before. This is something new and different. Water is life. To other states that face water shortages, Montana's extensive snowpack and relatively small population are enviable. We're also fortunate that more than 80% of our water originates within our state boundaries much of it cold, clear snowmelt that helps our arid valleys and prairies through dry summers. But that pattern is changing. Harvests are getting earlier and earlier. The glaciers in Glacier National Park are disappearing before our eyes. Here are six major themes of discussion likely to impact your future. First, the Montana climate assessment that scientists are sharing around the state. Snowpack has declined significantly since 1980 and it's going to continue to decline in the future with earlier springs and earlier snowmelt. Montanans who farm and fish and ski and garden know that from month to month our temperatures and precipitation remain a roller coaster. We still see every kind of weather. But measurements recorded across many decades demonstrate significantly altered patterns. Those who came before us in our various communities lived in a markedly different climate. Montana's growing season is now 11 days longer than it was in 1950. Scientists project Montana will continue to warm, with temperature increases greater than those projected nationally and globally. They say we can expect reduced snowpack, earlier snowmelt, less water in late summer, increased demand for groundwater, and more frequent and harsher droughts. How will Montana's $5 billion agriculture industry fare in a warmer, more volatile climate? Scientists say it's risky to generalize too much. Some crops may benefit, but others of great importance to Montana, including potatoes, sugar beets, and hay, are likely to be significantly challenged as snowpack and stream flow decrease, making irrigation less reliable. A second major theme, water is a shared resource. It's not getting the water that it used to. It's starting to show a lot of stress because they just don't have that groundwater in the summer that they used to. Mike Gafke saw trees and shrubs wither in 2017 that he'd never seen so thirsty in prior decades. He ranches in the rapidly growing Gallatin Valley, one large gravel bowl, as he calls it, where snowmelt has long flowed from farm to farm in ditches and also as groundwater. But now the flood irrigated farm that was his nearest neighbor is a golf course and a subdivision. No more flood irrigation. Gafke now realizes he just isn't getting the groundwater he used to. Farmers and ranchers take a lot of pride about being able to spread the water and having even growing crops and, and keeping things really green and growing. And all of a sudden now I saw all these weak spots. Gafke's conclusion is we need to think of water like a rope. If we guard only our individual water interests, 
our own separate strands, rather than the greater weave that makes our surface and groundwater systems strong, we'll end up with the water equivalent of a frayed rope with weak, unreliable water resources. If we keep the twist on the rope and we keep the conversation and everybody together, then we have a nice, strong system uh, where, where everybody, everybody benefits. A third theme, our rivers are speaking. We're seeing changing resources. We're seeing earlier runoffs, we're seeing lower flows on most of our rivers, we're seeing higher water temperatures as we get to the middle of the summer. Things are definitely changing. Yeah, it was, um, it was kind of scary. <laughs> I, Casey Gallagher educates Montanans who live in the Milk River watershed about their drinking water, the populations of Harlem, Chinook, and Haver. As drought spread across the state in 2017, the Milk River, by late June, no longer had any natural flow. Only because water is diverted into the Milk River from the St. Mary River, 700 miles away, did these communities have drinkable water. Most residents had no idea. If we didn't have the St. Mary's Diversion, Haver would not have had water. In every single community in Montana. The need to improve awareness and drought planning was a fourth major theme. Every community needs to act now to put in place an aggressive plan to address water shortages. The summit paid special attention to our state's nearly 28,000 farms and ranches, noting that food producers in eastern Montana faced the greatest risks of rapid swings in temperature and precipitation. Observations from northeast Montana at 3 p.m. in Glasgow. We're seeing more extremes every day in what we're doing. Tanya Franzen heads up the National Weather Service's forecast office in Glasgow, where the term flash drought wasn't even used a decade ago. The 2017 drought was a shock to everybody. And northeastern Montana is roasting. In May, things started to really dry out across eastern Montana. And by June, we were hearing about the impacts from the farmers and the ranchers to the livestock, the crops, the water supply. Wildfires are spreading across much of Montana. And by August, there was not a piece of Montana that was not involved with the 2017 drought. We can't be doing things the way we've done them for the last 75 to 80 years. Also raising concerns for water, growth. The sheer amount of open space and working agricultural land being converted for homes, much of it large lot sprawl. And we're all so dependent on water. So whether our interest is in using water for recreation or just having access to healthy water, you know, it, it's certainly in all of our interests to be aware. As you watch the spread of single family homes over the last century and its acceleration in recent decades, consider impacts from septic systems and wells on water quality and water quantity. You know, we never want to get in a situation that as that housing continues to develop, we have a, a serious public health issue where people are exposed to each other's wastewater. We all use the water, so we're all going to need it. What can each of us do to improve our water future? Find out where your drinking water comes from. Learn how to keep unhealthy stuff out of your local streams, like fluids from your vehicle, trash, fertilizer, and sediment. Think about our fish. Find ways to use water more efficiently so more remains in our rivers and streams. Volunteer to improve the health of your watershed. Maybe most importantly, talk about water with your fellow Montanans. Don't take anything for granted anymore because we're going to have a, a changing landscape, you know, a changing, a changing water situation as we go forward. This is a challenging time we live in. There are tremendous challenges. And I think it was Einstein that said, you can't solve the problems with the same thinking that produced them. And when we connect, then we can begin to expand our thinking and find solutions because it's essential that we begin to take action.